All right. So I'm going to go over cubic applications and whatnot in a second. But before we do, I want to show you something really cute. This is my dog curled up in a chair. So say hi to Sophie as she is wonderful and incredible. And you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to turn this slightly. So she's going to be kind of in the frame for this whole thing. All right. Cool. Let's get started. There we go. All right, so we are going to be talking about cubic application problems today. Um, so how to solve stuff that has cubes, cube roots, like word problems. All right, so let's take a pretty simple problem that would be cubic. Things that are volumes. So volume of a sphere, uh, the formula for that is V equals four thirds pi R cubed. So Let's say that I know the volume of a particular sphere. Um, generally, that sort of equation, you're not actually trying to find the radius. A lot of the times, uh, you will find these sorts of equations show up in gas equations when it comes to uh, like chemistry. Here we have this much gas. How big of a space do we need to contain it to then have a certain pressure? Because uh, pressure and temperature and all that stuff gets related. Anyway, side note, that's why we care about these sorts of things. So, volume in the sphere, 432 cubic inches. Let's find the radius. All right, so how do we do that? Well, let's plug stuff in. We know that this is volume. So, let's make 532 equal 4 thirds pi r cubed. Now we want to solve for r. I swear that is an r. All right. So how do we do that? Well, a um, couple of ways. First thing, we need to get rid of all of this stuff because the only thing cubed is r. So how do we, how can we do that? Well, the opposite of four thirds is three fourths. So multiplying by three fourths, Seems like a good option. That's essentially dividing by four thirds without the whole dividing by a fraction is kind of awkward and messy thing. All right, so I'm gonna put a three fourths out in front, get rid of this four thirds. Cool. So I now have three fourths times 532. You know what? We can go ahead and multiply that. Do I have a Desmos available? I don't. Okay, well. We will worry about Desmos when it comes to it. Uh, let's see, here we go. Boom. Got myself a Desmos, and let me make it where you can see my Desmos. There you go. There, have a Desmos. All right, so I'm gonna do three fours times 532, get 399. So I have 399, I didn't have round, equals pi r cubed. Now, let's divide by pi to get rid of pi. So now we have uh, 399 divided by pi. We get roughly 127, down to a couple of decimal points actually. 127-ish equals r cubed. So let's take all of that and let's cube root it. So what we can do is we can do function, scroll to our bottom and select this button. And we can do three to the, copy that. Copy. Paste. Nope. I wish. All right, 127.005, uh, six, or, all right, I think I probably have enough level of accuracy for this. Um, because the reason why we're cube rooting, I didn't really explain, is to get rid of the cube. I'm doing kind of a terrible job explaining this. Um, so what we end up with is R equals roughly 5.026. And let's say that we went to round to the hundreds, so two decimal places. So I'm going to say that's 5.03 as we round up with the six. All right, so we'll call that our answer. 
basically we want to get this value by itself we get, do what we can to get rid of everything else all right let's try another one hopefully i'll explain this one a little better um we have let's take this thing back into pretty view um we have a trail mix company um uh, packaging the snack for a, cyl a cylindrical shape uh with the radius of the cylinder equal to its height so a, a really convoluted way of saying that we only have one variable for finding the volume so we have this equation uh r equals cube root of 3w over 2 pi which we have a radius for w grams of trail mix so find the approximate radius of the trail mix Hold 10 grams of uh, our radius of each package to hold 10 grams of trail mix. All right, so we essentially have 10 grams is our weight, so we can just plug that in for weight. If we do that, r equals q root 3 times 10 over 2 pi. Hey, look, it's already solved for r. We can just shove all this into our Desmos. So, Let's get that Desmos right back up. Clear this stuff out. I'm going to put all of this in. Let's we'll start by putting our cube root. Then we'll put tell it a fraction to make our lives easier. 3 times 10 on top. 2 pi on bottom. We get 1.6838 blah 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 blah. And we want two decimal places. This 3 means we Keep what we have, we round down 1.68. Sounds like a good for us. Cool, that works out pretty well. What if we had the same problem, but this time we are given the radius six centimeters? All right, well, how much does six centimeters around in a uh, holding? So, six centimeters is let's grab. Like six centimeters, uh, two and a half centimeters is roughly an inch. So we're looking at uh, about about two inches, a little more than two inches. So okay, I have a little field notes thing here. Um, about that much. Focus. There we go. About that much. So not not big old. About the about the width of an iPhone. Okay. So, let's do this. Um, so, uh, let's plug this thing in. We have Q root 3w over 2 pi, and we are given 6 centimeters. Okay, first off, yeah, here we go. First off, the entire right side is under cube root. So we can cube it. So let's cube this thing. So, 6 cubed, grab our thing over here, 6 to the third power is 216, equals 3w over 2 pi. Now, let's get rid of this whole 2 pi on bottom. So let's multiply by 2 pi, cancel those out, 2 pi, we'll do times 2 pi, and it gives us 1, 3, 5, 7, do this in different color 1357.168 that's enough level of detail equals 3w we'll take all this we'll divide it by 3 um, because we want to get rid of 3 in front of the w and that will give us w equals 452.389 Four five two point three eight nine. If I want to round to the hundredths, two decimal places, nine says go up. So four five two. Oh, this is kind of getting awkward in the way here. Four five two point three nine would be our final answer. All right. Hopefully that makes some sense. Hopefully this is making sense. All right. Let's go on. Let's do the final problem, which is a little bit of a challenge problem. Um, we have a Mazda RX-8. Now this uses a Renesis twin rotor motor. Okay, that quick. Uh, basically we have two giant spinning Doritos. 
um, that are going around going bang, 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 bang. Now, total volume of each rotor, or sorry, of both rotors together is 1.3 liters. And let's assume that the entire thing is blowing up. The entire thing's the combustion chamber. Don't really how it works. Really, it's about a third of it. But just for the sake of making our lives easier, let's find the diameter of each of these little spinning triangles of doom. Okay? Uh, these things rev to about 9,000 RPM. They're, they're super fun motors to deal with. Um, also, the early gym ones tended to blow up. So, all in all, great car. Um, but, let's see what we can do. Now, the first thing, we have a twin rotor. It means this 1.3 liter is a lie. We need half of that. So, 1.3 divided by 2 equals the size of each rotor. It comes out to 0 0.65. So, this is liters per rotor. Okay, cool. That's going to be our volume for one rotor. We have 0 0.65 equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. And another thing worth noting is that liters, I believe, is centimeters cubed. A thousand centimeters. I feel like it's a thousand centimeters cubed. Let me just do a quick little Google on that thing. Uh, liters to centimeters. Uh, cubed. Yep, one liter is a thousand centimeters cubed. Cool, good to know. So let's turn this into centimeters cubed. This is in liters. So multiply it by a thousand. That is six hundred and fifty centimeters cubed. Now we actually have a unit to talk about our radius. This is getting into nerd stuff, but love it. All right, now let's solve this thing. Um, we want to get rid of the four thirds. So we multiply it by three over four, multiply it by three over four. Grab this thing up, 650 times three over four. So we get 487. 0.5 cubed pi r cubed. All right. Now we need to get rid of the pi. So let's divide by pi, divide by pi. There we go. I can see the whole thing. Divide by pi, and that gives us radius cubed on the right side. What's on the left? Well, let's take all this and. Uh, 485 divided by pi. Okay, we have 155.176. All right. Now to get rid of that whole cube thing, let's cube root. And what we would end up with, the radius equals, well, Go through this 155.176. Uh, 5.373. Blah blah blah. So 5.37 because three rounds. Down. So 5.37 centimeters is the radius of a uh, radius of a cube. Now that's our radius. Not actually what we asked for, because we asked for the diameter. So let's take that, let's just multiply it times two. And so that means that our diameter is 10.747, so 10.5. So diameter is 10.75 centimeters, Roughly about, uh, let's see, that would be two, four inches wide. So, about this, this far is the size of your 
cylinder. If we're assuming the whole thing is going boom, uh, which is kind of crazy. Also, it's assuming that's a sphere. It's not really a sphere. It's, again, like a Dorito-like shaped thing that's spinning around. Uh, yeah, um, rotary engines are wild. So anyway, uh, a little bit of car trivia as well as a lesson on uh, cubes and cube roots. So hope you enjoyed that and hope you learned something. So have a good one, y'all. And uh, again, there's Sophie. Keep her up. So thank y'all.